so many questions for you guys. Um, Diana, we'll start with you. Um, obviously, your, your books are a humongous phenomenon with diehard fans all over the world. Um, what, what was your biggest concern about adapting it to live action? Uh, well, the usual is, well, <laughs> will I actually recognize any, any uh, element of the story once right. it's made into film? Uh, but, you know, we've had options over the years. People have been wanting to make movies of Outlander for years and years and right. years. And the thing about an option is that you only do it with people that you have some reason to trust. And so far as trust is where you can use in the context of film. Uh, because there's always the chance that they will actually get the financing together and make the movie. Right. And at that point, you know, it's way too late. They own the rights forever, so you want to be really careful. So we have optioned uh, the property only four times mm -hmm. in the last 20 years. Wow. But we get a few or three requests a month. Right. But, um, Bronze is the first uh, first one that has actually come to fruition, and that was sort of a four quarter deal, very very long in coming. Seems sorry, go ahead. Ron, what were the difficulties of adapting such a widespread story to the screen? Well, season one, you know, uh, the fact that we got 16 episodes to tell the story was the key thing. We need, you need enough time to tell what this tale is in, in the first book. So that was that was the, the most important thing. And, you know, the rest is just a matter of execution because we have the story, we have the characters. Adaptation is a different discipline than creating, you know, a series from scratch. So it's you're exercising a different muscle as you're sitting in the writer's room. You're putting the story up on the board. It's like, here is the book version of this story. Okay, how do we divide this up into 16 hours? What's the beginning, middle, and ends of each individual episode? You know, what's this episode about in particular? Or what's, how do we structure this? Do we take that scene? There's, there are scenes that are really memorable in the book that fans go, oh yeah, I love that moment. And then you look at the actual book, and it might be only half a page, but it's a really memorable scene. So then we say, well, can we expand that? How we, let's play that even bigger. Let's, let's, let's embroider around the edges of it and get to that moment that everyone's looking for. So it's a different task. You know, you're trying to be... Our job is to be as faithful to the book as we can. That's something Starr said to us directly. Chris Albrecht read the book himself, which is... Who, who does that? I know. <laughs> and he said to me, um, he said, we believe in the book, trust the book, make the show for the fans. And just trust that anyone who's not read the book will be swept up in the story like everybody else. So that was great. And I just said, perfect. So now we know what we're doing. Our job is to go and realize the materials, not to reinvent the materials, not to do a new version of it. It's to do this material. What's the best visual version of Outlander that can be produced? I have twofold. It's, you can both answer it. Um, kind of piggyback off of that. Do you think that leads to the key to the success of the show? That is you're dedicating it basically towards the fans and gearing it towards the fans? <laughs> I think that's important. You know, I, I tell, I've told a lot of people on the production, you know, and I said, look, one of the things to keep in mind on this is this is a favorite book to someone. This is that book that sits in somebody's shelf that they've read over and over again, and it's personal, and it's something special. I and mean, Our job is to give them that story. They're all going to look forward to it. They're all going to be terrified we're going to fuck it up. So let's not fuck it up. Let's just like give them, it's a good story. Let's make a good version of it. Um, I, I, I have a friend who named her son Jamie uh, after your book, so clearly your fans are, are very, very dedicated. So casting must have been, I mean, a major concern. How did you approach that, and, and were you involved? Um, well, to the extent that once they thought they had found the appropriate Jamie and Claire, they sent me the audition links, and I don't know what they would have said if I'd said, oh, no, that won't have been all, but, but luckily I loved both. We were both holding choices. our breath. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And, and Ron, you're, you have such a background in science fiction, and while there's obviously the time travel element of the Outlander books, it, it is more so a, a historical romance. So, so what attracted you to the project, and, and how are you maybe adjusting your sensibilities a little bit to, to create this show? I mean, I love history, and I love historical fiction, and you know, I think that there's actually a pretty wide crossover between genre fans, and they're almost all historians. I mean, I found this over and over again. Star Trek fans, Battlestar fans, you start talking to any of them at an event like this, and sure enough, they'll all like know a lot about history. And so I think there's a big, it's not as big a leap as you might think it is. Right. There's a lot of people who just love sci-fi, who just are fascinated with various different cultures, because the past is an alien world in a lot of ways. So much of science fiction is basically riffing on old cultures that, you know, Battlestar was using a lot of tropes from the past sort of Star Trek, so it wasn't that big of a stretch for me, and you know, I, I was attracted to it just because it's a good story, I mean, I, was, I read the book, it was a page turner, and I was compelled, and I was drawn into it, and I just thought, I, I like this, I want to see this, I'd like to write these things. Ron, you said before that the show is, is 
for the fans. But what about the people who aren't familiar with the source material? Is it going to be very accessible for them? There have been like adaptations where it just goes too much for the fans and the regular viewers. Just like not a good. I don't think so. I mean, I think this is a fairly straight narrative. You know, it's um, Game of Thrones is a very successful show, obviously, but it's a very complex show. You know, this it's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of different storylines. A lot of characters. And, kingdoms and a whole bunch of complicated material. This is a single narrative and I don't think there's anyone who won't be able to follow the, the, the story. And I just think it's an engaging story. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think you need to have read the books to be engaged by the story of Claire. You know, what happens to this woman in this world that she finds herself in. I, I don't think that those are mutually exclusive things in this case. No, but it's fairly simple. You know, the books encompass so many different genres that it's often difficult for me to explain, well, what kind of book is this? Because it's not a kind of book, it's, you know, a story. And so I've found that the only way of selling the book to someone is either to give them free samples, essentially, from snippets, which I've done for years and years, or to just begin telling the whole story. In 1946, a British ex combat nurse named Claire Randall goes to the Scottish Islands on a second honeymoon. She and her husband have been separated by the war for six years. They're getting reacquainted with starting a family. While they're there, though, she goes out walking by herself one day in the woods, finds a circle of standing stones, and as she walks through the circle, she disappears back into 1743, where the first person she meets is a man in an 18th century army officer's uniform who looks just like her husband and turns out to be his six times great-grandfather. Unfortunately, he also turns out to be a sadistic bisexual pervert, and while uh, trying to get away from him, she falls into the hands of a gang of soldiers who are also trying to get away from him for other reasons. Well, uh, they finding an English woman wandering around the countryside in what looks to them like her underwear. She's wearing a 1940s house dress. They scoop her up and take her to their castle to find out who and what she is. Well, that uh, Captain Randall, her husband's ancestor, is also very interested in finding out who and what she is. And in the fullness of time, she's forced to marry one of the young clansmen to avoid being handed over to the Captain So she's trying to escape from the Scots, get back to the standing stone circle, and her husband in the 18th century, she's being pursued by Jack Randall. And uh, she's falling in love with the young man that she's been obliged to marry. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Diane? You've done that before. Yeah. <laughs> Diane, are you involved in the show? In, are you writing any episodes? Or oh, no, Ron uh, invited me to, in fact. And I said, no, it's a, it's a different skill set. Mm -hmm. I'm a novelist. You know, when I work, it's, it's completely solitary. It's all mine. I have total control over what goes into it. And I, so, um, script writing is much more a communal affair. It's very interactive. It evolves throughout, all the way up through the shooting. <laughs> in fact, uh, which I know I have friends who are script writers, and I've talked to them many times. They said, you know, I just, uh, I'm not adapted to working that way. I won't uh, be able probably to keep to the right timetable, you know, be responsive, and, you know, always up to man. And the other thing is that I have books to write. You know, I, right. I can't well, spare large chunks of my life to be totally involved in something like that. So. Would you want to join the writer's room just for a day or so, just to experience yeah. it? Yeah, that would be fascinating. All right, quick last question. Yeah. Right, is the plan right now to follow uh, one book one season? Is that kind of where you're going with it? That, that's the plan so far, and you know, we, haven't, we haven't gotten into the next season conversations yet. But, uh, yeah, that's the idea. Great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Good time.